Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. If you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Hi there. Welcome back to another episode of MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. And if you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Uh, today, we are going to work on a uh, friend of mine's 2006 Dodge Ram 2500 and uh, he's got the uh, 5.9 Cummins in it and uh, the little story behind uh, how we got to this um, you know uh, you can see up on the lift over here it's another project we've got going on it's uh, part of our Gixer cart uh, project and we have a uh, uh, little test and tune we're going to do coming up in uh, Barnesville, Georgia and uh, it's a, a track basically a go-kart track that will uh, allow us on there with something insane as this and uh, anyway you know I, those of you who know me I have my two Fords uh, F-250 Super Duties and uh, but those things were you know, one's a 95, one's a 96, and uh, uh, those things, while I would get in them and drive them anywhere, I'm not afraid to, but uh, their suspension uh, is much like that of a Sherman tank. I mean, it's just really not a nice ride for a long trip. And uh, the neat thing about the Dodges is is that uh, they, they ride like a car. It's amazing. And uh, uh, so... My wife was like, you know, hey, you know, can't we rent a truck or something, you know? And it's like, uh, well, no, not really. Not one with a gooseneck hitch. And so we decided to talk to my neighbor. He's a daddy tech aunt. He's another YouTuber. And uh, she's like, yeah, sure, you know. But, and right at that point, you know something's coming. You know, but there's this one little thing. So fast forward to now. Uh, we essentially rebuilt the whole front suspension, put all new bushings, ball joints, all, all this stuff in there. And because, uh, uh, you know, they had a lot of wear and tear on them. And, uh, you know, we want to be safe. So, and uh, so I just <laughs> gotten it back from getting it lined up after we did all the uh, uh, front end work. And I get out in the truck and start it up. I was driving it home from work one day and the AC compressor locks up. <laughs> it never ends. That's what you call the, the mechanic's curse. Because, you know, if the fates know that you can fix it, they're going to give you plenty of opportunities, trust me. So, you know, I've seen customers, you know, you've told them, look, man, the rod's fixing to come out the side of this thing any minute now. And six months later, you know, you see him driving down the road. Nah, 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 nah. What are you going to do? You know? And if it's one of us, you know, it's like, what's that noise? Boop. And there you are on the side of the road. So, you deal with it. It's the mechanic's curse is what we call it. Anyway, let's get cracking here. We're going to, uh, this is going to be more of a how-to. We're going to show you how to change out the uh, AC compressor on one of these. Uh, really not a bad job. You know, if you can... Muster up the tools to do it. You know, there's a couple of special tools you're going to need. Uh, you know, it's worth doing. You know, make you feel good knowing you did it. And uh, we'll uh, uh, go from there. All right, and I'm doing this with my phone here because uh, quarters are kind of cramped, but. Uh, the Cummins, at least this particular model, uses a, an electrically controlled clutch fan, kind of like, just like a big semi would. And there's a harness that comes down here and goes through a little slot in the shroud here and goes in front of the fan and goes up and then the wires plug into the front of that fan clutch. Well, look what we got here. Okay, this was actually bent way out here 
and I'm in the process of putting it back but this is what we had now this fan clutch might be toast we don't know but I'm gonna put it back and uh, get this out of the way and uh, let's see we'll see if it's it's good or not but uh, yeah that could be some bad juju there <laughs> A funny thing is in the very short distances I've driven this truck it's never overheated so or even given any indication of running it will warm but you can tell for sure this thing has not had a fan <laughs> so anyway just thought I'd show that to you and we're gonna try and fix this so okay so we got her back in place there and our fan spins nice I have to say that's a pretty challenging design right there because there's just so much that can go wrong with that because there's not a lot of room between that fan and that guide for that wire. So not sure what happened there but at least that's sorted. And we'll test it when we turn the air on and all that and make sure everything's working right. Okay, so we're underneath the truck now looking up, and this is the AC compressor. Now we're gonna need to we're gonna need to get our belt off of here. And uh as you can tell this compressor is locked up tighter than Dick's hat band. And we'll get our belt off, and there's four uh bolts with a 13 millimeter head on them. And you'll notice there's not a lot of room right here by the frame, so you just, on these bottom ones, you just have to loosen them enough to get them out of the bracket and leave them in the compressor and then you can come out and come down and then there's a 10 millimeter back here that holds your AC lines onto there. And uh, that's pretty much it for that. And then of course your wire to your compressor clutch, so. All right, now. Really, the ideal way to get at this, uh, you don't have a whole lot of room in here, so they get at the tensioner. I use a, a 3 8 long hail flexi head ratchet with a 3 8 to half inch adapter. Because if I try and get my big old honking breaker bar in there, it's not going to work very well. Then I can just pull down on this and loosen the belt. Of course, I don't have enough hands to do this all at once, but. Uh, you can pretty much use your imagination to figure out how to get that belt off of there. Now another little trick is, is you can take your flexi headed ratchet and move it over and let it hold against the bottom pulley here. That'll hold your tensioner in place with the belt loose so uh, you can get it out of your way because otherwise that tensioner is going to try to go all the way up and then your wrench is going to go like way to hell up in here somewhere where it's going to be damn near impossible to pull down on it. So that's just a little MacGyver techie tip for you. All right, so now we got this compressor out of here, and we can tell that this is not this truck's first air conditioning compressor. It's not the original one, so uh, new, made in Korea. Yeah, okay. It's like, uh, I'm sorry, but they're just not there yet. Until Kia and Hyundai become something better than a piece of shit, you know, I'm going to stay away from some of this Korean stuff. They're just not up to snuff, I don't think. But, hey, that's, again, just my little opinion. So, take it for what it's worth. All right, so, this old compressor was dry as a bone inside. So, my guess is, is whomever put this compressor in there didn't put a lick of oil in it. So the system, uh, the system didn't have uh, a leak in it. It was still holding Freon, and you know I had to get the 
get it evacuated first before I can start working on it. But um, uh, so my guess is, is they put this compressor in at some point and they didn't put they didn't properly put the oil in it. That's going to be my guess. But anyway, our kit here is all new stuff from uh, Rock Auto, and uh, the kit comes with the right oil. This Fiat Chrysler stuff uses PAG 46. Uh, 46 being the viscosity number, uh, so it's a uh, it's a uh, about the consistency of about the consistency of cooking oil. So what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, part of our oil here in the compressor, and then turn it over by hand a whole bazillion times, and then we'll put the rest in the uh, uh, accumulator. All right, so your kit is going to come with a bunch of rubber O-rings and gaskets and stuff for all different applications that this compressor might fit. So these are the two that go with uh, uh, this particular compressor, and they're the that green. Uh, I think they're uh, Viton or something. They're the better quality than the black. So now what we're going to do is we're going to chooch these with a little bit of refrigerant oil so they don't go in dry. Okie dokie. Now, we've got our compressor in there. We've got our O-rings uh, seals in here. And we've tightened this down. We've hooked our electrical compressor clutch up. And we've got our, our bolts nice and tight and we've got our belt back on now here's the important bit you want to make sure you hand turn this compressor a whole bunch of times to run that oil through because you don't want it hydro locking on you when you uh you know first time you engage that uh air conditioner so we're going to turn this thing probably about 30 or 40 times by hand and just make sure everything's kosher Now the other thing I'm going to do, just as a matter of good measure, is go ahead and replace the condenser. Just in case this thing pumped any metal through, which I don't think it did, but uh, we flushed it out and, and uh, made sure all the lines were clear. And we got our new condenser mounted in here, and then we're going to put a, a rubber O-ring and one of these little metal gasket dealies here you can see they are like these things here so and again we'll chooch it up with a little bit of uh, uh, refrigerant oil so they don't go in dry and once we get all that done then we'll put our accumulator in now one thing I neglected to mention and I wish I'd have got it on film but when you buy your condenser okay it should come with these covers bolted on to the intake and the outlet. And if it's a good quality made condenser from a reputable vendor, when you take that cover off, you should hear some pressurized uh, air or uh, vacuum escape. And that's it's a good indication to know that your compressor doesn't have any leaks in it when you put it in. And then you'll have to take these out of your old condenser most likely and then to do that you use an invert inverse torx uh, socket and I think that may be like a 35 or something and that will get on the head of that and get it off you know? or you can go right down here in this little bitty clean spot with a pair of needle nose vice grips if you have to. But since I have the inverse Torx uh, sockets, I can do it. And it works out for me. So we'll take and run this puppy in here. I've already got my new rubber O ring in there and my new gasket, and it's chooched with a little bit of oil.
All right. And now we've got our new accumulator in there. Our new compressors down in yonder. We've got our new condenser up here. I just always think it's a good idea to replace the condenser if you, there's ever any possibility of there being metal in the system. So. Alright. And now we've got it hooked up to a vacuum pump. And what that's going to do is that's going to pull a vacuum, a hard vacuum on the system. And if there's any moisture in the system, it'll boil off because uh, water boils at room temperature in a vacuum. So this way, this will get all the all the moisture out of it, and I'd promised the wife today that we were going to go down to the Frist Museum down in Nashville, and then if maybe we have some time, hit hit up the big library down there. So that's perfect. You want to leave that thing run as long as you can possibly stand, and let it pull as much moisture out of the system as possible. So we're going to do that, and then uh, the next step will be charging it up. <laughs> 